Lately, I've been playing a lot of Super Mario fan games, from more recent ones all the way back to some classics from the 2010s. And to my surprise, some of these games have held up pretty darn well over the years. And in this video, I'm going to take you through a handful of them and tell you exactly why these are incredible Super Mario Bros. clones. This is Super Mario Bros. for the Atari 2600. Well, it's actually called Princess Rescue, but it's essentially a demake of the original Super Mario Bros. made for the Atari 2600. To the untrained eye, this game looks very basic. But what you see here is pretty impressive on the technical side. See, the Atari 2600 was released way back in 1977 and had a very basic color palette and was designed to handle simple sprite-based graphics. In contrast, the NES, released in 1985, could display a wider range of colors and more complex sprites and backgrounds thanks to its more advanced picture processing unit. But Princess Rescue doesn't really care about that. It's here to bring Mario to you anyways, mustache and all, in gloriously low resolution. The game takes you through four worlds with 16 stages in total. There's a surprising amount of the game here. You've got the overworld, the underworld, castle stages, and even boss fights. It brings a nostalgic blast from the past, seamlessly including a host of classic enemies that you will easily recognize. From the shell sliding Koopa Troopas, and the ground patrolling Goombas, to the menacing Bullet Bills, and the crushingly powerful Thwomps. But it's not just the bad guys that make this game interesting. It also features all power-ups that are integral to the Super Mario series. You can find mushrooms to grow in size, fireballs to throw at enemies, the game even has stars to become temporarily invincible. They called this game Princess Rescue and not Super Mario because back in 2013 when this game came out, you could buy it on a cartridge to play on an actual Atari. But this is a free game that's completely free to download and play on an emulator. But if you play it on an Atari 2600, what's interesting is that the game actually supports the Sega Genesis controller, letting you use multiple buttons on the controller instead of just one button like most Atari games. It is absolutely amazing to see Super Mario Brothers in any form running on the Atari 2600. We're talking a console from 1977 with some major limitations, but as you can see, that will not stop the creativity of Super Mario fans. Next, let's check out another demake of the original game. This is Super Mario Bros. for the Pico 8. If you're unfamiliar with the Pico 8, it's a fantasy console. A system that's similar to an emulator, but an emulator for a console that never really existed. Pico 8 imposes artificial limitations, limited colors and sounds. Like all retro programming, it's up to the coder to work around these limitations. And this Super Mario clone is an absolute sight to behold. The gameplay in this game is a lot of fun. It's not as full-featured as Nintendo's Super Mario, but there is a surprising amount of the game fit into a tiny Pico 8 game. The graphics are one of my favorite things about this game. More polished than what we saw on the NES, sort of reminiscent of what you'd see on maybe a Game Boy Color Super Mario Bros. game. You can play this one right in your web browser, and it even has controller support. Although when I tried it with my NES controller, the buttons were backwards, so your mileage may vary. This demake doesn't just replicate the charm of the original, it reimagines it within Pico 8's limitations, offering a gameplay experience that's somehow both nostalgic and refreshingly new. Some cuts had to be made to accommodate the Pico 8 platform. I don't think this game goes past World 3, but what is here of the game is so much fun, and as far as I'm concerned, that's what matters most. Plus, the fact you can just dive into this adventure directly from your web browser, with or without a controller, just adds to the accessibility and appeal. Check it out. What would happen if you took some of the most iconic heroes in NES gaming and transplanted them into the original Super Mario Brothers? You'd get this game! This is Super Mario Bros. Crossover, a game that lets you play as characters from other NES classics, each bringing their own weapons and gameplay mechanics to the original Super Mario Bros. Now, it might seem a little chaotic to have a mixed match of characters all thrown into the same game together. I mean, this game is not designed to have Simon Belmont strolling through the halls of Bowser's Castle, but somehow it works, and it's good. 
I'm sure a lot of this could be credited to the precise implementation of each hero. You can tell a lot of work went into maintaining the original feel of the characters, and tackling Super Mario stages with other characters adds a fresh layer of strategy and excitement to the game. For instance, playing as Link from The Legend of Zelda introduces a melee combat element, while Mega Man or Bill from Contra offer a more ranged attack option. There were actually three major releases of this game. The original version 1 release, which had your basic Super Mario Bros. graphics with six characters to play as. Version 2 added a ton of customizable options to skin the game with other 8-bit and 16-bit graphics. It also added a few new playable characters to the game. Version 3, the final version, went all in with the customization options, adding a lot more skins, even the ability to play as an Atari 2600 style skin. With the wide variety of skins available, it's really fun to mix and match these, or even match the graphics together to make the stages more like their original games. He's more at home now. Version 3 also introduced map sets, where you can play through the stages of the original Super Mario Bros., Super Mario Bros. 2 Japan, and even Super Mario Special, the long-lost 1980s Super Mario game for Japanese home computers. Check out my video about that. The only real bad thing about this game is that it was created in Adobe Flash, and Flash is gone. It's unsupported and not even included in today's web browsers. The best way to play this one is by using an app called Flashpoint, which is an on-demand Flash game archive that lets you play these old web games on modern computers. They have all three major versions of the game archived. This game went all in on NES nostalgia. It's such a fantastic experience with so many options to customize it. It came out way back in 2010 and still holds up great today. If you grew up with these NES classics, this fan game is definitely worth checking out. Next, let's check out something a little different. This is Full Screen Mario, a fan-made version of Super Mario Bros. in HTML5, designed so you can play the original game right in your web browser using modern widescreen resolutions. The game takes a unique approach to widescreen by not only giving you the option to fill the sides of the screen so you can see much more of the level, but also optionally filling out the vertical space of the screen, making the game feel much more dangerous. The graphics here are one-to-one -one with the NES version, and it doesn't lack any enemies or obstacles as far as I can tell. This is not a port, but rather a remake using all of the original assets from the NES game. Every enemy, obstacle, and piece of the environment has been faithfully recreated, and being a remake, everything functions pretty close to the original game. Mario's physics do feel a bit looser here, but it's close enough that you'll probably adapt pretty quickly. Now what makes this version really special is the inclusion of some extra options, letting you toggle effects like parallax clouds, creepy gradient skies, and even a cool bouncy earthquake effect. This game even features a level editor. It's not quite as intuitive as something like Mario Maker, but it's decent enough for what it is. You can create custom stages or even edit the ones from the original game. This game allows you to save and load levels so you could create your own and share the files with other people. If you don't want to create your own levels, the game's also got a random level generator, which I must say comes up with some truly difficult stages. Overall, this is an awesome little web game that's a lot of fun to mess around with. There are a few sites still hosting this one, so if your web browser doesn't like one site, try another. Finally, I've been wanting to talk about this one for a while. This is Mario, a 2012 Super Mario fan game that combines the classic Super Mario Bros. NES game with the Portal Gun from Valve's Portal series. An incredible match. In this game, you navigate through the familiar worlds of Super Mario Bros. armed with the Aperture Science Portable Quantum Tunneling Device, aka the Portal Gun. This game turns the classic Super Mario Bros. gameplay on its head. By equipping Mario with the portal gun, you are not only tasked with running and jumping through levels, but also with managing the portal gun, transforming traditional enemy encounters into a playground of experimentation that is just a lot of fun. It's not just about getting from point A to B anymore, it's about how creatively you can navigate Mario's world. Another interesting aspect of this game is that it was created to support mods. One standout mod is the Portal mod, which puts you into a series of test chambers just like in Valve's Portal game, requiring players to use the Portal gun to solve puzzles that require the clever use of portals to bypass obstacles and progress through the stages. 
It is so much fun. Unfortunately, this mod is somewhat hidden in the game's menu, which is a shame given its quality. It almost seems like this should have been the bigger focus. Don't get me wrong, the portal gun is a lot of fun to play with in the classic Mushroom Kingdom worlds, but that world wasn't really designed with portals in mind. It doesn't really make use of the new mechanics. This mod does. There are some good puzzles in this mod. Very challenging and require a lot of thought. And some good old trial and error. Mario is an incredible game because it does more than just mash together two popular franchises. It creates a fun and cohesive and overall new experience. It's hard to believe that this one is as old as it is being from 2012, but honestly it holds up as a must play for fans of Super Mario, Portal, or anyone looking for a fresh take on classic Super Mario Bros. gameplay. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it, and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for your time today, guys. Goodbye.